Yeah. Okay, so about the layering system from Adventure Spec, it consists of three separate layers. I'm not talking about the base layer that you wear inside. I got that too, but I've not got that on the strip. So the first layer that goes on is the Baltic hybrid jacket. And we'll talk about this a little later. The second layer that goes on top of this is the uh, is the the mesh jacket and this is the principal garment that we're going to talk about first so the mesh jacket goes on top okay and then on top of the mesh jacket comes the third layer if you want waterproof which is the uh, the aqua pack i've got to memorize these names you know so that's what it is I'm going to keep the hybrid jacket on because it's shit fucking cold and there's a wind chill that's going on as well and we've got very light snow coming down on us so we're going to do this really quickly uh my friend who's the who's running the whole camera show here uh he's 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 not going to be too pleased standing around here for too long so we'll get going so the first point that I want to talk about is the fit of the jacket and why I love the fit of this jacket now in terms of height, I'm about 5'9 and 5'10 on a good day, depending on which side of the bed I wake up on. And uh, so that gives you a that gives you an idea of how tall I am in terms of the torso length. And my chest is about 40 inches. And uh, my waist, uh, my pant waist is about 32 inches. Uh, my waist at the belly button measurement is about 36 inches. And I picked up the medium I got the medium jacket from Dave. I had an interaction with him. I sent him my measurements and then he was kind enough to understand which jacket works for me. So I've seen online on a few forums like Adventure Spec, people asking questions, trying to figure out, you know, which, you know, what size works for them because, you know, obviously there's no place to try them out. You've got to buy it online. I would encourage you to write to the guys at Adventure Spec and they'll be only too glad to help you out. All right. So in terms of fit, if I wear this now on top of my Baltic jacket, because that's how it's supposed to fit, all right? And I'll also show you how it fits without the Baltic. So as you can see now, it fits pretty reasonably well. Yeah, and I'm gonna zip it up. And it's quite, quite nicely done. So here's the thing about buying the Adventure Spec jacket. When you, when you buy, uh, you know, the medium, you get the insulated jacket as a medium and you get the aqua pack as a medium. It's all tailored to fit just like that. You don't need to buy a large aqua pack to go over this jacket. No, it's all tailored to fit sequentially. So that's how it works. So in terms of fit, as you can see, it fits well over the Baltic and I'm going to get rid of the Baltic because let's say you're going to be riding in summer temperatures. Okay, so how does that work? So I'm gonna get the Baltic off. It's shit fucking cold. So I'm gonna make this quick. Ah. And we'll talk about the Baltic a little later, right? So when I get the Baltic off, okay, so obviously it's gonna fit a little loose because now you don't have any layers inside. And so in summer temperatures, this actually works great. And I'll tell you why. And here we go. You're gonna zip that up nice and quick, seamless zips. And now as you can see here, there's a bit of loose stretch material here, right? And this is being given for a reason because when you ride in uh, really hot temperatures, you want the airflow to go in and circulate. It won't circulate if the jacket sticks against your skin, which is what most mesh jackets do. So when they stick against your skin, the air goes in and then there's no exit, right? You just have hot air hitting you. When you're sitting in the motorcycle, you want the air to circulate around you. And when that happens, you perspire more naturally. You evaporate the sweat more naturally. And that's very good. The other thing, what I love about the fit it's got a generous fit, let me say, underneath the arms, all right? And the reason why it's got a generous fit underneath the arms is when you stand up and you uh, stand up and ride the bike, right? It doesn't bunch up, huh? so it doesn't bunch up and you've got a lot of extra room to move 
as you can see there's no bunching up at all there's room here which i love about the fit and also the back goes quite the way down and this is great because when you stand you don't want to be showing your butt crack off to people behind you yeah roost is okay butt cracks no so i love this it it kind of uh, you know it sits down here it's like a it's like a little coat tail right so it's like a little coat tail that covers the the low end of your butt or the high end of your butt so that's as far as the uh, fit is concerned and i really love the fit of this jacket i had uh, a dineasy mesh jacket which was like a sports fit cut over here is too tight here so it's very important that you buy a mesh jacket that works for off road riding and off road touring right or dual sport riding you don't want to buy uh, you don't want to buy a, a a regular mesh jacket thinking that it's going to work for uh, you know all kinds of situations no that's not how it works the second thing i love about this jacket is that it's extremely extremely minimalist and i'm a minimalist kind of traveler and i love the fact it's unbelievable that i'm going to say this but i love the fact that it's just got three pockets most people when they look for a jacket they want like multiple pockets because you know they want to stuff shit in but that's not the point you want a jacket that's minimalist so that you're carrying less shit so you're carrying less shit on your bike when you're traveling you're carrying less shit when you're going off road and that's the whole point so in terms of pockets you just got two in the front so one on the top here on the on the left which is where i carry and i'll show you what i'm carrying in my jacket on my pockets i carry my wallet it's a small minimalist wallet obviously uh right now i'm carrying some lip balm and my mask goes in here as well covid all right so everybody make sure you're wearing your masks on the right pocket when i tour or when i go off road what i carry is i actually carry my phone i carry two phones actually i carry one phone which is my primary phone and i carry another one which i don't have at the moment uh which is my gps device so i carry two phones here which is great so easily accessible right i'm not trying to zip a pocket here try to dig something i'm sitting in a fuel bunk i can open up pay do whatever i want so very accessible you know setup for the pockets here you also got uh a trunk pocket if that's what you guys would like to call it a trunk pocket so it's right here you got two zips so that you can access it from either side but there's just one pocket what do i carry here i can carry my aqua pack jacket it fits in it rolls in quite nicely and you can stuff it in over here they designed this specifically to carry the aqua pack jacket right now i'm carrying my gopro and uh, it's very easy so i just stuff it in there i can ride when i want to use it i can pull it out i can stuff it up my helmet and i can start using my gopro so that's how useful this is you also got a uh, some space uh, underneath the chest uh, not the underneath the back armor where apparently according to the guys at adventure spec i have not tried this out you can fit a slim 2 liter uh water bladder but i i i'm not a fan of water bladders i like to carry my water in a bottle and when i stop i pull the bottle out and i have a sip of water that's just me but you can do that if you want <laughs> So that's as far as the minimalism goes. That's what that's the second thing that I love about this jacket. The third thing I like about this jacket is it's CE I think level 2 mesh certified, which is great. This is like bomb proof stuff according to the guys at Adventure Spec. You can go read up about the technical specifications of this jacket on their website. They've got like a, you know, a beautiful new website that they've done. So I encourage you to just go there and have a look. It's adventurespec.com. it's uh uh they they've laid out the data quite well so I, i'm not here to kind of memorize and spit that data out but what i know and i trust the guys there is that it's ce certified and so if it's ce certified i trust the jacket uh you know on the tarmac and i trust the jacket off the tarmac as well the finish and the long term uh quality of the jacket long term you know i've used it now for a year 20000 kilometers How does the jacket feel now? Uh I've put it through a lot of shit. Does everything work well? Are stitches coming off? Uh so let's look at that too. So in terms of finish when I got the jacket, I was just so happy because it was, you know, uh superb. I couldn't find a stitch that was out of whack. I inspected the jacket quite closely and it was great. And now 
after 20,000 kilometers in a year of technical trails, uh, 45 degree temperatures, negative degree temperatures, and gear, you know, really rough usage. I've washed the jacket uh, maybe a handful of times. I'm not, I don't take care of my gear that well. Here's the other thing that I love about this jacket, washing the jacket. You know what? It's a mesh jacket. You can wash it really easily. So on this very trip, all we had to do was we jumped into a bathroom. We got a little hose. We hosed the jacket down. We splashed some shampoo on it, hosed it back down again. All the crud came out. We hung it out to dry and it's done. Try that with your Gore-Tex jacket. It's not going to work because I also have a Climb Badlands Pro. A couple of years older, washing that is a pain in the ass, especially on a trip like this where you know, you're not going to stay too long at any destination. You're going to keep moving, moving, moving. You want shit to dry fast. And I think that's another reason why I really love this jacket and the whole layering system. And in terms of long-term quality, as you can see, the zips, perfect. No snags, they work great. Uh, the Velcro, perfect. Again, everything works as they should. The main zipper, look at that, smooth as fuck. Okay, I haven't put any grease or, you know, done any, uh, you know, a cleaning uh, beyond what I usually do. Water, soap, rinse, out to dry. That's it. Yeah, but everything just works as is and it's, and I love it. The only thing that I think, uh, you know, I would love from the guys at Adventure Spec is I know that they did a beautiful uh, kind of green colorway for Lyndon Poskett and I saw his review. I saw his review of the Adventure Spec gear. He used it in the Dakar. He used it in, in a couple of rallies uh, and that's why I, I, I contacted the guys at Adventure Spec and I wanted to talk to them about it. Uh, the, he got a special green colorway which was like just beautiful and awesome and I wish and I hope uh, Dave you could look into bringing out a few more colorways just to make it a little more interesting you know I think everybody wearing gray kind of begins to feel like an ADV spec uniform uh, which I'm sure you wouldn't mind uh, for marketing but uh, I think a few uh, other colorways uh, if your inventory could handle it uh, would just be uh, icing on the cake this jacket since it's a year older they've brought in some new changes to the jacket and i'll tell you what they are when i got this jacket it was without the armor i had to get the armor separately which i didn't opt for my armor that i'm wearing right now is d 3 o which i've pulled out of the client jacket and it fits it perfectly so it's uh, armor independent in terms of you can you can stuff any armor you want but the jacket that you buy now costs exactly the same and they give you the force field armor as part of the package, which is great. I think it's the force field isolator series, level two certified, much lighter than D3O. And I'm probably, I'm, you know, I'm putting the cash together for, you know, upgrading to that armor, the force field isolator or, or something better. And, and I'll stuff that into the jacket because right now with the D3O armor, it's quite heavy. D3O is quite heavy. So that's one change that they made. The other change that they made when I looked up online is, uh, Apparently they did something about the cuff, but I, I couldn't figure out what change that was. Uh, and uh, what other changes? I think something, anything more significant? Not really. So I think it's just, I think they're just evolving the jacket now, which is great. Don't fix something that ain't broke is my mantra. And I'm sure that the guys at Adventure Spec are kind of following that too. Now that we've finished talking about the main jacket and what I like about the jacket, you'll find other reviews about uh, you know, the material and blah, blah, blah on YouTube. Plenty of reviews out there now because the jacket's been out for a while. Here's the thing about the layering system. You know, I think Adventure Spec were the guys who first brought that out because I think layering as a, a concept existed in trekking and backpacking because, you know, that's where people would wear lighter stuff because you've got to climb, you've got to carry all your shit. You can't wear one jacket for all purposes and then climb because you'll perspire and blah, blah, blah. So you layer, right? So these guys then figured out, you know, why don't we bring that layering system into the motorcycling genre? And I think these guys were the first guys to do that. Uh, and once they did it, and I think it started catching on and people started figuring out that the layering system is the way to go because I bought a Climb Badlands Pro and a Climb Overland Pant and I tried to go off-road or dual sport riding with that. Fuck me, I got screwed. Try to go riding with that, you are screwed. Uh, I think I think the uh, uh, the heat will probably kill you. The weight will 
will probably kill you. So that's probably not on. In terms of really hard technical riding, I still think that this jacket is a bit too much. I kind of go with plastic armor and uh, something like a, a climb uh, jersey on top, which it's a little bit more maneuverable. I did try this on a technical trail and for me, uh, it didn't really kind of work out. So I think for each purpose, you got you got to have a separate set of line of gear. So where was I? Where this jacket excels is dual sport riding. Dual sport riding, long distance, you're covering long miles, you're going through different temperatures, you're going through different terrains, and you need to carry a one layering system that fits all, then this is probably a great thing to, to get. And Climb knows that, which is why they brought out the uh, Baja S4, and they brought it out quite a lot later than the Adventure Spec. So, and then I think Moscow Moto has, has got some stuff out now too, but Adventure Spec were the first guys to, to the goalpost. So in terms of the uh, layering system, now we'll talk about the hybrid Baltic. Which is what I was wearing earlier. And I'm gonna, I love, I'm gonna wear it now because it's shit fucking cold. I don't know how many times I've said that, but my hands are freezing. All right, so it's a thin fleece layer uh, and it'll kind of do the job. What I like about the Baltic is that one, it fits in perfectly underneath the main mesh helmet. The second thing is you can rock it without the mesh gear. You know, if I'm, if I'm walking to a coffee shop, if I'm sitting by a campsite, which I've been doing a lot on the strip, it's great. It doesn't make you look like a freaking dog. You know, it, it, it works perfectly with uh, you know, these are like hiking pants that I'm wearing. I don't know if you can see them. These are like hiking pants that I'm wearing. And it goes perfectly with it. Nobody sees this and says, hey, you're wearing docky motorcycling gear uh, and, and makes you look uh, out of the way. So that's about it as far as the, as far as the hybrid uh, Baltic jacket is concerned. It's just a simple fleece layer. Technical specs again, get onto their website. No? On top of this again, I got to put the uh, mesh jacket for these temperatures. This is what I would do. You know, there's still ice on the road here. I don't know if you guys can see, but I don't think, I think you can. There's a little bit of ice down there, so it's fucking cold. Man. For, for brown skinned Indians, this is cold. Alright, so now we have the aqua spec, the aqua pack not aqua spec, aqua pack jacket. This is 100% uh, waterproof. It works almost like Gore-Tex. Uh, to some extent, it, it uh, lets you perspire and lets you evaporate that perspiration, but it keeps water out. It doesn't let water in. Yeah, so that's how it works because I wore it in humid conditions when it was raining and I didn't sweat at all inside the jacket. So this comes, uh, you know, stitched a little bigger it's snagging onto my watch. Let's see if I can get it on. Yeah. Okay. And it's cold as well, right? Okay. And the D3 are almost too big on this jacket, man. I really need to get that force field on. Uh, and then you just snap this on. And then you want to be fully waterproof or windproof. This jacket is windproof too. I've tried it. So if it gets really cold, you can get all three layers on and you're set. You're absolutely rocking it because you are warm as a, you know, you're toasty inside. It's nice. So this is it as far as the layering system is concerned. So I get the aqua pack jacket off and this is a pretty easy jacket to pack. I'm not going to show you that. I want this to be a short video and it's already quite long, but very easy to pack. I just roll this in and carry it in my little uh, BV sack, which is sitting on the back of my bike. So you see, even if I don't pack it right, this is all there is to it. Okay. Then, uh, that's as far as the Adventure Spec jacket goes. And Dave, thank you so much for sending this kit out to me. I really appreciate it. It was during the COVID times and you hurried my shipment through. I wanted to do this video in Nepal because that's what I told these guys. I said, I'm going to Nepal. I want something that works for that kind of a trip. 
Uh, I couldn't go to Nepal because of COVID. They closed the borders. The borders, I think, are still shut. But this is the next best thing. Sikkim is a state that's uh, to the northernmost point of, almost the northernmost point of India, towards the east. And it sits quite close to Nepal. I mean, there are, I think, there is a border that they share with Nepal. And the high mountains are similar. The weather temperatures are similar, so it's cool. And, you know, God willing, Nepal might happen next year. And I'll still be hopefully rocking that winter spec jacket. So, ciao guys. Hope you love this review. Cheers. All right, buddy.